block, now you know I'm coming through When the growth look good on you, best believe they wanna screw now I've been trying to climb, devil threw me in the dark Baby, don't be insecure, you can still go make a mark like Blow. Could never let them drain my soul now Blow. Table turning like doorknobs, wow Blow. I think I'm about to set sail I'm a walking living legend, walking with my chest yeah. now Life keeps dealing me cards, I keep feeling in love Yes <clears throat> yes 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 people it's g and we are back in the building we are back we are back we are back with another post match review uh post match reaction whatever you want to call it um obviously uh last night's game leeds versus liverpool emphatic victory from the reds um six one away at ellen road um you can't really ask for more in regards to an away performance um, you know, before we dive into everything, as you guys can see, scroll across the bottom, we are on the road to 400 subscribers. So if you could please, I think we are about 39, 40 away from that. So guys, please make sure you smash that subscribe button. Um, make sure you're liking the video. Make sure, you know, as I said, you subscribe, you share this out, all of that good stuff, blah, 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 whatever. Let's dive into it. So obviously Liverpool last night, in fact, a victory 6-1 against Leeds United. Um, before we dive into the semantics and all of that kind of stuff, um, a few points. Um, yeah, it, it was a, a decent performance uh, from the Reds, man. Can't really complain too much. Um, obviously, we'll dive into the nitty-gritty and all of that stuff in a second. But, um, yeah, you know, it, it was a good performance. Uh, Leeds are really, really bad. You know, they're really a really bad moment at this current moment in time. Um, I think that when it comes to Leeds, you know, it was contrast to the performance that they put in at um, Anfield. Um, I think the way that they set up, the way that they played, you know, when they played against us and they defeated us at Anfield was totally different to the way that they're obviously playing now or they played last night. Obviously, under a different manager, you know, uh, Jesse March, you know, when we played them at Anfield, he was able to set them up in a way that kind of nullified, you know, our attacking threats and you know all the good things so to speak that we can kind of offer in games and they were able to just kind of <clears throat> dull the game out to be honest with you if i'm being perfectly honest you know um i was reading somewhere you know the the kind of performance they put in last night is the kind of performance that they would put in you know in the last 30 minutes of games 20 minutes of games you know when they're just trying to sit deep you know soak up all the pressure and hope for the best effectively and um, that was the kind of performance that they put in, you know, um, last night. But it was throughout the 90 minutes. You know, they didn't really pose a threat. They looked like a team that's just got no confidence whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, it, it was one of those kind of games that we were able to, you know, take advantage of that, to be honest with you. You know, we were able to hit them where it hurts, you know. Diogo Jota scoring two goals, Mo Salah scoring, Gakpo scoring, um, Darwin Nunes scoring. So in an attacking sense for our attackers, you know, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, especially Diogo Jota. Um, obviously, you know, there was a lot of talk before the game. And it's funny, these kind of things always seem to happen. Um, everyone spoke about the lineup before the game. And obviously, we'll get into positions and roles and stuff like that. But Everyone spoke about, you know, Diogo Jota playing, you know, why is Darwin Nunes on the bench? You know, he's always on the bench, blah, blah, blah. And why is Gakpo playing up top? Why don't we play Nunes through the middle and all of these things? And then they all score. You know, that's just typical Liverpool this season, to be honest with you. You know, we can all have a moan. We can all, you know, complain about certain little bits and bobs, you know, in regards to, you know, the team sheets and stuff like that. But every time I feel like we as a fan base complain, about the lineups or the tactics or whatever, it seems like the the team maybe they hear it, maybe they see it, and then it just galvanizes them, and then we, they go on to you know these emphatic victories kind of thing. So, you know, as I said, Luis Diaz coming back as well, um, obviously a plus point uh, for Liverpool, him being able to get some minutes as well. Yeah, like, like I said, um, all in all, it was a it was a good away performance to be honest with you. Like I said, you you win six one away, of course, you know, and as bad as Leeds are, it's still going to be difficult to go away to Leeds. I know, obviously, Palace, I think, hit them for like five or whatever it was, you know, the week before. So there is obviously that. Like I said, they're in a bad moment. I do fear for them. If I'm being totally honest with you, I do think that they are going to struggle to stay up this season. Um, you know, I just, it's something about Leeds, man. I, I don't know. They're flirting a lot with that relegation 
you know, in, in that relegation zone, to be honest with you, and the relegation battle. So how they get out of it, I don't know. I just know that the way that they played last night, the way that they played the week before against Palace, I believe it was, th they can't play that way for the rest of the season. It's just not going to work against any of the Premier League teams, to be honest with you. I just think they're a bit too strong for that. Um, so they're going to need to go back to basics um, and then inevitably, obviously, go from there. But that's obviously lead side of things. So, obviously, we move on to Liverpool. Um, there's a few players I wanted to talk about <clears throat> um, during this, uh, you know, a couple of players who kind of caught my eye, good and bad, to be honest with you. Um, and obviously, I think the best place probably to start is going to probably be, you know, this guy right here. And that's obviously Trent Alexander-Arnold. Um, you know, as a lot of people have been speaking about him, a lot of people have obviously had their say. You know, uh, I've previously done uh, a video uh, with um, Jerry and obviously we spoke about, you know, Trent, his new position and all these kind of, I, I say new position, new role within the team kind of thing. And, um, you know, Klopp did it again. Um, this time, obviously, it worked. You know, Liverpool got the victory. You know, Trent played re uh, really, really well in the game. Uh, had a solid game uh, playing in that kind of new DM kind of position. You guys can see here, obviously, by the heat map and stuff, you know, he's on that right-hand side-ish, but, you know, in defensive areas, obviously popping up a bit further forward, um, but wasn't really down that right-hand side, you know, you know where usually he will try and keep the width as much as possible. Um, obviously, him and Robbo down the flanks and stuff like that. He wasn't really there. He was more playing as a six alongside Fabinho. Um, and then we had our kind of three or four players in front. And then obviously Mo Salah, you know, kind of playing, I, I don't want to say as a lone striker because he was out wide quite a lot in the game. And I felt like he was kind of isolated throughout that game um, for, ver for, uh, for various parts of that game. I felt like Mo Salah was kind of isolated, um, having to hold up the ball quite a lot to be able to wait for people to come and help, you know, people like Trent and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you know, as I said, you know, it just, if you look here at the average positions, as I said, you know, it was kind of like a three at the back with the two, obviously you can see in front with Fabinho and Trent, then you've kind of got two more in front. So it's like a three, two, two, three kind of formation, if I'm being totally honest with you. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of what it looks like um, to me. But again, you know, a lot of people are going to, you know, have their say in regards to, you know, what they think about that. Now, obviously, when I think about it and, you know, you know, I'll put it up again. When, when we look when we look at it here, obviously, this is their average position. So these are the positions that they obviously took up during the game. Obviously, on the team sheet, it obviously comes up as like a 4-3-3 kind of thing. And I can see why, because obviously Trent, obviously the person we're speaking about now, he's in this kind of new role. Now, a lot of people have spoken about, you know, after the game. And the first thing I'm seeing on, on the social, but just also in a general sense is, oh, my goodness, Trent is playing, you know, as a new DM, we just need to find a right back. Now, once we find a right back, Trent can just slot into that DM role and everything should be great. Now, I think people need to start understanding there's a difference between being a DM and just kind of being in that position. So when we have the ball and when we've got possession of the ball and we're just keeping it and just popping it about slowly and stuff like that, you know, Trent will obviously occupy these areas here, clearly in this new format, in this kind of new system um, that Klopp wants to play alongside Fabinho, you know, where he can pick up the ball from the uh, centre-backs so of Konate and Van Dijk, um, and, you know, he plays from there. When we don't have the ball, he goes back into that right-back slot. So when people are saying, you know, oh, we should just sign a right-back, I, I, it doesn't really make sense to me anyway. Again, this is just my personal opinion. It wouldn't really make sense because let, let's look at this right now. If you can see, if you guys can see it here, Let's say, as an example, you sign a right back, as an example. How would that formation look like now? What, what would you end up having to do in this kind of formation? It wouldn't be the same. Do you, you know what I mean? The whole point of this is so that you can almost negate, you know, Trent's defensive responsibilities, so to speak. So it seems like what, what I was saying, you know, on the terrace last night was that with Trent, what, what I'm seeing is... Before, 
he was like the right wing back. You know, he, he would be on that right hand side, and that's where that's the area of the pitch that he'd occupy the most. Yes, he'll be a bit further forward, so he'd probably be in that Henderson slash even potentially Salah position, and then Salah obviously will be, will be a little bit further forward. Now, but then he would also try and come into the pitch to play with the midfielders in there when we've got the three. Now it seems like his starting position is now in that DM role and it only goes back into a four, i.e. he only goes back into as a right wing back or right back when we are defending. So that seems to be his task where Klopp saying, you know what, I want you in that middle of the pitch now. I want you to actually stay there as opposed to playing right wing back, coming in every now and again to, you know, pick up the ball and stuff like that. You know, even little things like he was picking up the ball from the centre backs, you know, in defensive midfield position he was never really doing that before it would always be he'd be on that right hand side even if he's picking up the ball from the defenders it's on that right hand side and then he would try to come in when we are attacking but mostly he would be on that right hand side as opposed to now he's in the middle when we are attacking and he's only on the right hand side when we are defending so that's why i say I'm not against buying a right-back, by the way. Um, I, I, I would prefer us to sign a right-back. I think Liverpool need another right-back. Um, I know we've got Joe Gomez. He could slot in there. I know we've got um, uh, Calvin Ramsey. I almost forgot his name. I know we've got them there. But they if you play them, you, you couldn't play this kind of formation. You, th this formation only, only works with Trent on that side kind of thing. So then it would just depend on the type of right back you do then sign who, if you can find a right back who's then comfortable with doing that, then yeah, you know, it's all gravy, like a Cancelo, Zinchenko type of, you know, fullback, then yeah, perfect. And I think they do it a lot better than he does. Um, just because of their, I feel like they're a lot more comfortable in attacking phases. They almost play like, like like attackers, to be honest with you. Whereas Trent, I don't feel really does that. I feel he's more of a, you can see he he can't really dribble. He's all about the passing, um, brilliant long range passing. He's got his passing is on 100. We already know that kind of thing. But when I, when you're looking at asking him to dribble and be comfortable in all of that kind of technical kind of thing, I, that's not really for me anyway. I don't see that with Trent. Whereas a Cancelo, Zinchenko, very comfortable on the ball dribbling, you know, very comfortable in tight situations and all of these kind of things, very comfortable in that attacking third of the pitch. And I feel that they're probably better suited to something like that but again Trent's only played it for two games so I'm not ruling it out I'm not trying to write it off or anything like that I'm just trying to point out that signing another right back you couldn't play this formation here anyway because it just wouldn't really work but heck even if you don't sign a right back and let's just say you had Joe Gomez there are you guys now going to tell me that you'd prefer to have Joe Gomez sitting in the DM position that's not going to work that's definitely not going to work because he can't get both to save his life do you know what I mean and he can't pass so it, ju it just wouldn't work. It can only work with, obviously, Trent in there. So if you do sign another right back, which I do think we should do, if you do sign another right back, it would just have to then revert back to, you know, a 4-3-3, you know, conventional 4-3-3 that we know Jurgen Klopp obviously likes to play. Another interesting position, um, and this, this isn't one of the players I wanted to talk about, but I'll quickly go into it. You can see Diogo Jota, number 20, there on uh, the left-hand side just above Robbo. Again, his positioning has been a little bit weird in these last couple of games. We saw against Arsenal his positioning. He was, all, I think he was even behind um, Andrew Robertson on the average positions, which I found so weird because I was like, so where are you kind of playing? I, I don't really get that. And again, even yesterday, there was a few players, him and Gapo. Gapo, I felt he was, everyone spoke about, you know, again, it's so difficult. When you win 6-1, obviously we're content, I'm a content creator, so I'm going to analyze things, you know, in a certain kind of way, you know, kind of think at the end of the day, where, you know, in terms of certain players and what they're doing. Trent, I felt, had a really, really good game. I felt like he played really well in that, in, in that position. Um, Leeds didn't offer a threat down the flank, so we never really got to, and they weren't really good in the midfield area. So we didn't really get to see Trent really have to do much other than show what he can actually do, which is obviously going to be easy. He's bread and butter to him. At the end of the day, we know he can pass. We know he can do this. We know he can do that. All of that good stuff. So when I see things like that, I'm like, okay, cool. I wasn't overly gassed by that performance, to be honest with you. Um, like context is obviously also is everything. I felt like, um, 
you know, Leeds allowed Trent to do what he can do. And if you allow Trent to do what he can do, it's going it, it, to, he'll, 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 he'll punish you. He'll punish you. As I said, he got his assist um, last night as well. Good assist for Gakpo for the first goal. But again, even that assist, it didn't come through the middle. His assist, I think, for Nunes did come through the middle um, in terms of the past. You know, Leeds trying to play that high line and then blah, blah, blah. Obviously, we saw what happened then after that. But in terms of his first goal, that's what I associate Trent with. You know, down that, down that right-hand side, putting the ball into the box and then obviously going, you know, from there. But obviously then even speaking about Gakpo, like I said, me personally, you know, again, a lot of people got gassed over his performance. And again, I was a little bit confused because I said he looked lost. You know, prior to him scoring, he looked absolutely lost. Him and Diogo Jota. And it was funny because you saw on you saw everybody speaking about Diogo Jota and Gakpo, you know, up until we literally scored the first goal. It was like, everyone was like, oh, Diogo Jota, he's rubbish, you know, he's finished, we need to sell him, and blah, blah, blah. And then Gakpo, the, not sell him, but Gakpo was just more like, what is he doing and stuff like that. And then boom, what happens? They both score. And like I said, that's just typical Liverpool. But I was just confused with, G like I said, up until he scored, I was just so confused. Like, what is it you're actually doing? Because it's all well and good. And I think someone I saw someone mention this about Gapo will be like will, will probably be like a Firmino, a guy who's not going to get you tons of goals. He'll get you goals, kind of thing. Maybe he might get you more goals than a Firmino, kind of thing. Because I think he's a lot more clinical than a Firmino. Um, but because of the role that he's kind of being tasked to do, which I understand now as to why Klopp would probably prefer him over a Nunes, I look at it and I think to myself. It's all well and good, you know, you dropping deep, doing all that Bobby stuff. It, it, that's all well and good. I, I get that, you know, it's to help the team in certain areas and blah, 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 blah. I get all of that. But, you know, at times, like I said, he just looked lost. He, he just looked so, so lost. And he, he probably needed that goal in the game to just, obviously, once we got that goal, Leeds kind of, it just deflated them. And you could just see it in their performance. You can just see it in their play. But, I felt like Gapo needed that. Diogo Jota obviously needed his goal because he was stinking up the place prior to that. But yeah, I, I just it, for me, I, I don't know. Like like Gapo as an overall performance, I'd probably give it like a six point five uh, for Gapo um, kind of thing. Six for Diogo Jota. I wasn't really oh, like I said, I wasn't really overly impressed with um, with the performance. If I'm being totally honest with you, I just felt like I said it was just lost. It just felt like they were just lost in what they were tasked to do. And then it was almost like the build, and e even with Gakpo dropping, the build-up play, the possession, obviously that's not just his fault, but in terms of the team in itself, the possession, the build-up play, everything was slow, was boring. You know, we weren't moving the ball quick enough, you know. And I all, and th this seems to be a problem with Klopp, uh, Klopp's teams in the last couple of seasons is that, Possession is so flipping slow. Like, I don't understand why you want to just play it so slowly. It, it, you know what I mean? Like, I, I really, really don't get it because you can continue doing what you're doing, but just move the ball a lot quicker. Because once you start moving around the opposition, again, Leeds are poor, so it's not going to take much to get through them. But against other opposition, even just slightly better, once you're playing against them, they, all they need to do is just sit. They don't really need to do too much. As long as they're blocking the passing lanes and things like that, it's not going to take them too much to be able to just nullify what you're trying to do. But it just seems that like it's just like, again, like I said, up until that first goal, it, that performance was crap in my personal opinion. Up until that, but like I said, up until the first goal, yeah, we were dominant on the ball. Of course we are. We, we were always going to be dominant on the ball. That, that was never going to change. That was never going to be any different. But in terms of just like playing and, yeah, I definitely wasn't impressed. But like I said, once we did get that goal, you could see it in the team and everyone was a bit more relaxed and, you know, stuff like that. One player that I definitely thought had a really, really good game uh, was Curtis Jones. Um, again, a lot has been spoken about Curtis Jones and we've got to give props, you know, where, where it's deserved, if I'm being totally honest with you. This is a player who, and it's so funny because typical Liverpool accounts, um, which I think is harming the fan base a little bit, to be honest with you, because once you put out certain bits of information or <clears throat> certain type of tweets and things like that, you know, trying to get people to almost sway their thinking. Obviously, you should have your own mind regardless, but 
you know, you, big accounts, you know, asking questions like, is it time now that we give Curtis Jones a run in the side? You know, things like that. Is it time that we give Curtis Jones more respect? Is it time that people kind of stop saying, you know, we should sell him and stuff like that? Look, Curtis Jones, in my personal opinion, in the game, fantastic. You know, I, I thought in it, he was my man of the match anyway uh, over anybody else because I felt like what he was tasked to actually do in that game, he did that so well. Got himself an assist as well uh, for Diogo Jota. Um, and I just felt like his all-round play and, you know, on the ball, you know, ground jewels, you know, it's 17, won 11 of them kind of thing. Only lost, well, he lost possession 13 times, uh, crosses, long balls, accurate in all of them. Big chance created, obviously, for the goal. Um, dribble attempts, four out of four, you know, got all of that right. Got 89.5% um, accurate passing, you know, two key passes in the game. Got a lot of touches on the ball. Um, look at his action map here. Uh, when you look at this, you can see um, with uh, Jones against Leeds, you, go, you guys can see it for yourself. I, I don't know if it's big enough for you. Um, you know, he made four recoveries in the game, four successful progressive passes. And as I said, he, you know, four out of four dribbles, you know, won. And I think for him, it was like an all-round display for someone like Jones. And I think with something like that, you know, it, it, it does him the world of good for his confidence. Um, and I also think that when you look at Jones over these last like couple of games, he's probably been our best midfielder. This seems to be a trait, to be honest with you. Badgetic comes in, all of a sudden he's our best midfielder. Jones has now come in, all of a sudden he's our best midfielder. I mean, it doesn't take too much to be a Liverpool's best midfielder this season, but to the game in itself, like I said, I felt like Curtis Jones was really, really good, man. I liked everything that he was doing, keeping, keeping hold. I know... We do get onto him, and I get onto him myself in terms of holding onto the ball, but I felt like he was releasing it in the right moments. He was holding onto the ball in the right areas, you know, drawing a foul potentially here, being able to pop it off just when a uh, defender or a lead player is just coming, you know, to try and take the ball off of him, which then creates the space then in behind him for the team to then go. You know, picking the right moments to, you know, use his dribbling ability, picking that right pass again for Diogo Jota's goal, you know, I saw that pass and I thought, I don't know if he can make it. I, I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know if he's going to be able to make that pass. They made it because I, I saw the pass to Salah on that right-hand side instead. And I thought that might have been a better option. He believed in his abilities, got the pass, we got the goal. So, you know, for me, like I said, um, Curtis Jones, really, really, really good performance. Trent, really, really good performance. Um when we look at um, the way that Liverpool obviously build up and stuff like that, you know, I'm looking here. So when we're on the right hand side, this is kind of, you know, what it looks like, you know, with obviously Trent in this kind of new position, you know, so you've got your kind of three at the back. Um, Trent's obviously a lot further forward with Fabinho and Jones in there. Henderson's kind of playing in that pocket, in that kind of half space, you know, where he's just behind the attackers and obviously Salah stays out wide. And then obviously when we're on the left hand side, Trent will obviously then come over to that side. So it's, it's kind of more or less the exact same thing as you would see, you know, on the right-hand side. Henderson and the front three stay in their positions. Midfield kind of stay in their positions. And then <clears throat> you're supposedly kind of, you know, good to go. Obviously, that's against Leeds kind of thing. And obviously, you can see Van Dijk's got the ball. He's got options in terms of probably play out to Robertson, who's going to be the free man, play it to Canate if you want. Um, Canate can then, obviously, then Trent will probably either pull out wide or come in a little bit, which then leaves Salah out wide, isolated, which then he can then pass it into Jordan Henderson. When we're attacking on that right-hand side, this was something that I saw, I um, can't remember the account on Twitter, um, but this was something that um, they were speaking about and it's something that I do agree with, hence the reason why I got it up, was when we are, say, on that kind of left-hand side, what I would like to see is you know, if you've got the front three as as they are in this kind of position, obviously, when we're attacking kind of on that left hand quadrant of things, I would prefer to kind of see Trent kind of go a bit further wide, because then what usually happens is you then have to get Salah to go out to that side. He has to run, obviously, over to that side. Obviously, then whatever happens, obviously, that everyone then moves across, blah, blah, blah. Then Henderson, obviously, then will then make that run into the middle of the pitch where we saw him, where we see him here kind of thing. And then obviously we then tried to play, but I feel like if, you know, Trent makes that run instead, I always feel like then we've got a spare man on that side of things. And then you still got your three attackers 
<clears throat> obviously Salah being the closest one to Trent Alexander-Arnold to be able to play with him. And if you still got Diego Jota and Gakpo with Henderson obviously playing in that space there, I just feel like it'd be better because then Van Dijk, who loves to play that long ball, as you can see, he has someone to pass it to there. At the moment, you've got no one on that side. So when you've got no one on that side, really and truly, if I'm being totally honest with you, they haven't highlighted his name. But when you see the person next to Trent Alexander-Arnold, if we're playing all on this side, Trent's going to come in anyway. If Trent's going to come in, that guy's going to be free out there. That then leaves a space. If we're leaving spaces out there, again, if Leeds were a bit better and a bit smarter, leaves us isolated. We saw it against Arsenal. We saw it how it was how Martinelli would almost follow Trent around in that kind of position. And then that leaves the overlap for the defender. So Zinchenko, or whoever's going to play, whoever played on that side, it leaves the space for them. And then obviously Arsenal, who are a lot better than Leeds and a lot more smarter, can then start playing their football. And we know that they like to play football. And that is kind of my worry in, you know, when, I, when I'm looking at this is that I probably need Trent to kind of go over to that side. But if you do that, you're then leaving the team with only two centre-backs back there. So then it, it, it creates it then almost another problem because then you're kind of left bare at the back, you know. So six or one, half a dozen of the other. Obviously, every formation, every tactic in the world is going to have its pros and cons kind of thing. But if I'm just trying to look at how we can negate against certain teams and the way that certain teams like to play, I just feel like that probably would be something that Trent maybe would potentially look at. But again, Klopp wants him a lot more central um, in those kind of areas. Now, the two there's two players, uh, just before um, we wrap it up, there's two players I wanted to talk about. So one of them is Kanate. My opinion had a poor game yesterday. Uh, also had a poor game, in my opinion, against Arsenal as well. Uh, no, let me take that back. Didn't have a poor game against Arsenal. I just don't feel like he was that good. But last night, I felt like he had a, a poor game. Um we know what Konate is about. We know what this guy... And as you can obviously look at his heat map here, and I think it's a lot different to the heat maps you might see from him in previous games under, obviously, the 4-3-3, where he hasn't got to cover that whole right-hand side. Now, Konate is athletic. <clears throat> He's a really good defender. He's strong. Um, you know, he can match up with most attackers in terms of, you know, it, probably every attacker really in the Premier League in terms of like pace, definitely in terms of strength and stuff like that. We get all of that. <clears throat> One thing in this tactic is, so when we look at it here, you're asking Kanate to be on the ball a lot more than you would before. I posted out a tweet this morning and I said, Liverpool might potentially have to look at two central defenders now i'm not saying to drop Kanate. i'm not saying that i think he's poor or anything like that Kanate has got his strengths what Kanate is good at is the physical side of the game ask Kanate to play football he cannot do that it's so evident it's been evident since he joined here that he isn't a player who's comfortable on the ball he can't dribble he can't really pass um you know, he can't really break lines or anything like that. What he's good at is, I need you to defend. I need you to be able to make sure if you're the last man, you're able to get that defender. Now, he is quite rash at times. Um, he's always very, very eager to get the ball, which at times it does work. If it works, then Liverpool on the attack. When it doesn't work, we, we, we you know, we see these things. When, obviously, he was at fault for the goal. And um, this isn't just because he was at fault for the goal. I mean, I've seen it a million times with other players kind of thing. So it's not even just that. But it was that when I saw that, I said, yeah, I knew it. But like, I knew he's going to make a mistake. I didn't think it would lead to a goal. But I just knew at some point he's going to make a mistake. Because you're asking the, probably the worst out of the four defenders, so to speak, if you're including Trent. You're asking the worst out of the four defenders to in terms of, being comfortable on the ball to be on the ball quite a lot now because Trent is obviously in that central midfield area. So he's going to pick up the ball in the wide, uh, wide right or wide uh, uh, centre back right position. Because obviously we need him to be able to, you know, do these things in terms of, uh, let me get the other one up. We need him to obviously pick up the ball. As you can see, he's got it there, pass it to Trent or try and find a Henderson or a Fabinho. The Henderson pass, I don't feel like he's going to be able to do that too often. Trent, yeah, because it's close to him. Maybe Fabinho makes some angles, but he's probably going to try and always go back to VVD and then let VVD play with it um, and then go from there. When you're asking Kanate to do the almost uh, the Nathan Ake, you know, Kanji kind of role, 
they're so comfortable on the ball. So they can do that. He's not comfortable on the ball. So I don't feel like he can kind of do that role. As I said, I'm not saying to drop him because as a defender, he is a very good defender. I don't want people to misconstrue it and think, oh, you just blow up. No, 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 no. Canate is a very, very good defender. He's very, very solid. But if you're, we have to look at the formations. We have to look at what we're trying to do. If you're trying to have ball-playing defenders, he is not one of those. So whether you then decide that maybe he has to swap with a Van Dyke potentially, who is obviously, because the ball's going to be kind of mostly on that right-hand side anyway, because you want to play the ball to Trent more often than not. So then, you know, on that left-hand side, I, I, like, I don't know. I really, really don't know. That's why I'm I'm just a little bit like maybe Klopp's going to I do, I don't know what he's going to do in the summer but maybe he potentially looks at you know finding another center but like two center backs because we need I feel like we need them um especially especially if we let like Joel Matip or Gomez go maybe he might think uh, you know that those two are fine to do it but I just don't think they're comfortable on the ball enough and Matip is and Matip certainly is I, I wouldn't really have a problem if he was there he's just really out of form and I don't really know what his future looks like. But if you had someone like a Matip on that side, it would be a better fit for <clears throat> what we are trying to do with Trent's new role. The difference is, is that physically, in terms of the pace, the strength and all of that kind of stuff, we don't have anyone else there. It's a bit of a conundrum. And as I said, you win 6-1, people might not see it and might not look at it that way. But that was one of the most notable things that I saw from last night's game. And it's something I've always thought anyway, is that Kanate is just kind of like your typical kind of centre-back in terms of asking him to be a defender, he can do that. Asking him to play ball, he can't do that. So, again, it's just something to think about. It's just something to think about. Another player we look at is um, Andrew Robertson. Now, Robbo's obviously, I haven't got the heat map up here, but when you look at Robbo's heat map, obviously he's con constantly down that left-hand side. The problem that you're going to have with, with that is that he can't continue keep bombing forward. Like I said, when we saw the game against... We're not going to play against Arsenal every week, so it's not always going to matter. But we're going to play against teams who are able to exploit it a lot better than Leeds obviously failed to attempt to do. Uh, Robbo can't always continue bombing up the pitch and doing his normal role because you're leaving the defence literally isolated with just two back there with no real cover at times. Especially if teams break really, really fast, we're left so bare. We're left so, so bare, you know. So <clears throat> that's where I'm kind of like, mm. again, like I said, I'm not saying you sell these guys. But what I'm saying is, if you're trying to play a certain way, I take Pep Guardiola uh, at Manchester City. What did he do with Joe Hart uh, when he was there? Just before they bought, uh, they bought Claudio Bravo and then they obviously got in Edison. Joe Hart was a good goalkeeper. He, I don't think he, he even said it himself, whether he believed it or not, but Joe Hart was a good goalkeeper when he was at Manchester City. What Man, uh, Pep Guardiola wanted from his goalkeeper, though, wasn't the sheer fact that you're a good goalkeeper. I'd probably even say Joe Hart was a better goalkeeper than an Edison. But what he wanted from his goalkeeper was, I don't really care. Obviously, I care because Edison is still a good goalkeeper. You know, one of the best out there, in my opinion. But what I'm looking for is someone who can play ball. So I'm going to need to get in a goalkeeper who can actually play ball and is obviously good at the goalkeeping side of things, but that doesn't even seem like to be my main priority. It didn't seem to be his main priority in things. It was all about, I need my goalkeeper to be super comfortable on the ball. And he didn't feel like Joe Hart did that, even though Joe Hart was a good goalkeeper for Manchester City, you know, one Premier League and stuff like that. So it wasn't like he was some poor goalkeeper and then all of a sudden you know, <clears throat> new manager comes in, blah, blah, blah. That That's the kind of thing that I'm talking about in regards to, you know, a Robbo and a Kanate. Very good players if they're playing in a certain system. If you're trying to change the system, we're going to need to look at ball-playing defenders. So you're going to need more players like that so that the system is a lot more fluent because otherwise you're going to get unstuck in the long run because the system won't really work. And again, like, like, we, like we've said about Liverpool this season, square pegs, round holes. You end up just putting players into certain positions, seeing if they work, and then just trying to force them to kind of do it. This is only if you're still going to go into next season with that kind of same, um, with the same kind of formation, 
and roughly the same kind of personnel, you're going to need to look at that again. Like I said, <clears throat> and I have to keep reiterating it, I'm not saying sell these players. What I am saying is you may just have to look at buying ball-playing centre-backs to be able to fit the system that Klopp wants to play. That's just it. But again, that's just another conversation. But that was something that I noticed both in the Arsenal game and in the game last night against Leeds is that Robbo's role is that he needs to... Obviously, he himself needs to start learning, but also Klopp needs to then get him to understand that you can't just run forward like you're the normal fullback in this kind of position because it won't work in this. We, we will get outrun. It, it, it will just happen over, over a period of time. You will start seeing teams easily exploit it, not because the form, um, not because I don't think the tactics aren't good. I think this is pretty decent in what Klopp's trying to do, but he just needs to tweak a few players' roles because he's trying to accommodate the one player who is obviously Trent Alexander-Arnold. If you're trying to base the team and accommodate this one player, you're going to need to change the roles of other players in there, you know. So, again, quite interesting to see what's going to happen with that. Obviously, also interesting, like I said, you know, Diaz coming back, you know, he's still got Nunes kind of thing. What did they, what does he do with them, you know, moving forward? Is he going to revert back to a normal 4-3-3 uh, with Trent really just playing on that right wing-back role? Once a Diaz and a Nunes come, uh, Nunes come back into the team, you still got Thiago to come back into the team. Um you know, a lot of questions, but these, these are good questions. Like, like I'm not, I'm not against none of these questions. These, these are really, really good questions because it really starts to test the resolve of a Jurgen Klopp to see what he like, what he can do once he's now changed things around a little bit. I'm very intrigued to see how he's going to move forward with everything. But again, we'll just kind of have to wait and see. But those are just the kind of well, that negative, so to speak, that I kind of saw from the game, you know, in regards to Trent's new role, because that was like the really big thing in the game. And, you know, Klopp spoke about, it, you know, this formation suits us and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I guess it's easy to say that when you win 6-1. Of course it is. So we'll see between now and obviously the end of the season how obviously Liverpool end up. Uh, will it be the same? Will we just, you know, go on, continue playing well? We've seen this script before, win a few games in a row. Everybody gets excited. Top four is all back on then we lose. You know, this is our first win in five. Let's not even forget that. This is our first win in five. So let's not get too ahead of ourselves. <clears throat> but like I said, relative to the game in itself, good away performance from Liverpool. Um, you know, 6-1. You know, you couldn't really ask for more in an attacking sense of things. So, yeah, it's just going to be interesting. I, I'm Like I said, I'm just so interested to see how this kind of formation and tactics and styles and everything kind of works, you know, moving forward. Do I think it could work long term? Maybe. I, like, I really don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I don't want to shut it down before it's even really started. Um, I don't feel like it's too much different to what we were doing before because I feel like the essence of our uh, our style of play and stuff like that is all exactly the same. It's literally just Trent has changed his role a little bit. Um, in terms of his positioning, uh, you know, in attacking and defensive transitions and stuff like that. But we're still playing slow, boring football. Possession, is, uh, the build-up is still very poor. We're not really creating, um, in my personal opinion, enough. Um, so, again, whether that comes with time or whatever, I don't really know. But, again, we'll wait and see how that kind of goes. But, like I said, Liverpool 6-1 against, uh, against Leeds. We move. It was for me. It was a get in, win, and leave type of performance. <clears throat> uh, Leeds are really, really trash. To be honest with you, I do fear for them in the long run. But you know, we'll wait and see. But you know, that's the end of my uh, post match reaction. Uh, guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure I believe today uh, I'll be on the Joe James show, uh, just speaking obviously a bit more in depth, obviously about the game. Uh, uh, tactics board so make sure you guys obviously stay tuned in for that later today um and yeah just make sure you guys are, are subscribing to the channel if you're if you're new man but i'm g play um play, i was about to say player watch uh post-match reaction done and dusted i'm out people